Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. You know, I often cover rigged sporting events. Not often, but occasionally. You know, I believe that, I mean, these are real games that are manipulated for entertainment and monetary purposes, right? That's my take on big-time sports, which is, you know, obviously the most logical. I mean, not because it's my position, but because that just makes sense, right? Because it is entertainment. But there was a game, a college basketball game, between the Iowa Hawkeyes and Caitlin, I always want to say Collins, because she looks like that reporter, Caitlin Collins, but Caitlin, uh, um, Caitlin, uh, Clark, Caitlin Clark, who's this big star, maybe the biggest star women's college basketball has ever had. And there's some interesting things that were there to see, right? So I became aware of this because the basketball player, Damian Lillard, who seems to be, well, he made um, one funny video. You know, there's all these bizarre workout videos out there where basketball players are doing uh, bizarre type of things, right? Bizarre type of, uh, you know, various um, things to improve their coordination, so he posted this video, it comes out as um, We're Gonna Fly Now by <laughs> the Rocky movies. He comes out with a hockey stick and a cape on. And, uh, you know, funny mask. And they got tennis rackets. It's good. <laughs> and, you know, they're doing. <laughs> and this was a movie getting shot at by a Dirt Ball. Um, and then uh, this is thing and Dennis thing and you know, all this stuff. So there's all these workout videos and this was spoofing it, which I thought was you know humorous. I see the end of it here, but um, he's in the thing, and so but for the most part he is somebody who seems to be fairly serious. He's got a hula hoop going. Um, he's gonna. Yeah, the hula hoop and pick up the cones. And then he's shooting nerf things at him. <laughs> or, or a squirt gun or whatever. But he came out as a professional men's basketball player. Damian Lillard calls out officiating in West Virginia, Iowa game. And he said the it didn't seem like a fair whistle. And so I guess they played really well West Virginia but there was a foul disparity and it was 27 fouls for uh against West Virginia and only 11 fouls against Iowa so a few things I'm in the editing process let me just jump in here um you know I wasn't searching for this because I don't care like I watched a little bit of it because of boredom and whatever so it was on covered that in my last video and then YouTube started sending me things, including this. You know, YouTube recommended an article or something, which uh, I think it was the New York Post. And I found it surprising that a, a professional basketball player would call out the officiating at a game in the women's, you know, women's college basketball. Because whenever you start throwing shade on, it's a no-no to cast any sort of disparity that like there's some sort of conspiracy or something's rigged because you know the majority of people believe that sports is something that they can watch and there's some level of you know it's entertaining but also there's it's legitimate and also people are betting on the games and all that so you don't really as a professional athlete want to say these things like they once in a while criticize the officiating but not the integrity of the game right but he's basically saying this game is rigged and he didn't go to West Virginia it isn't like he played for West Virginia and that's his alma mater and he, he was a fan of theirs he must have tur turned on the game probably to watch Caitlin Clark and saw that you know what I ended up seeing a little bit with UConn and the little bit I watched and there's a big call that we'll get to that it was rigged right and so the information came to me through recommendations by you know 
whatever algorithm and bots that are doing that on, on YouTube. And I looked into it, and it was very easy to see that there is they are favoring Caitlin Clark and the Iowa team. And the reason for this is Caitlin Clark has already got multiple endorsements. And I was watching the men's college basketball. I, I didn't watch the whole games, but I was fast-forwarding it, right, um, uh, last night. And I had taped the Iowa-UConn game, and I saw some foul disparities, which I'll get into in a moment. And there was a big call at the end of the game. But this commercial came out. And check out this thing right take? here. What's going on, like, right at this particular area, right in here? What do you think is happening in that area, Caitlin? And just the whole thing here looks kind of dudish. To achieve greatness. Boom. Yes. So there's Caitlin. To rewrite <laughs> history and go places no athlete has ever gone before. Okay, so I just want to jump in here again. You know, I covered this on a video here on this channel um, last two days ago. And today's April 7th. And the video was entitled, The C. Price A-List Male Actors Have to Pay for Fame, Kate Middleton Family Debt. And it involved this guy, the guy who played Reacher. I can't remember his name, even though it was a couple of days ago, whatever. His name is Alan Rick Rickson, Rickson, something like that. Um, and that made me revisit videos I made before. A-list actors having to wear dresses. And this idea of uh, Michelle Obama being a dude and some of these other famous female actresses actually being dudes. You know, it's uh, something I did more of a tongue-in-cheek about videos I, I had done originally. And, you know, we've known about all the stuff to do with gender and you know, all the stuff they're putting, the feminist movement and the, you know, trans movement, all these things that are going on. And I, you know, decided to cover this again. And so I saw a little bit of the UConn game, which I'll get into in a moment, the Iowa UConn game. And it appeared clearly rigged to me. And then the next day, you know, I was going to cover this today anyway. The next day, I was last night, I watched a little of the men's college basketball game. And this commercial comes on, and Caitlin's, support, Caitlin's rocking an Adam's apple. And I don't know what that means or not. Women sometimes have them. I don't know. But, you know, like, I didn't plan any of this. And I'm always aware of how information comes to me. Like, I saw the Alan Rickson thing, and I, it brought back some memories and, you know, things that I covered at the beginning of this channel becoming popular. And, you know, I decided to talk about a little bit in a follow-up video on my main channel. And, you know, here. And then all of a sudden, boom, this thing comes up about rigged sports games and a woman sporting an Adam's apple. Like, just, you know, again, I don't know what it means or not. I don't care. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm light about all these things. But I have no interest in college, women's college basketball, but somehow, you know, took a look at a little bit of it. And before I know it, this is where I, <laughs> this is where the you know the path of information led me and you know not something i was seeking myself right it's, it's always important to me like it's you know very organic how this thing played out boom it takes passion it takes um it takes a johnson <laughs> it takes some testosterone <laughs> because no one thinks we have the balls to pull this off Heart. and a community that's there for you every step of the way. State Farm is proud to cover greatness. Okay, so Caitlin Clark, who was sporting an Adam's apple, and I had seen the game the night before. Now, Caitlin Clark, again, is the number one college female basketball player they ever had. And I think she lost in the championship game last year, or the Final Four or something, I think the championship game. And so... They definitely wanted her there in the championship game with South Carolina, who I believe is the number one team. Again, I don't really follow this. So I taped the UConn game, and I watched maybe a total of five minutes, and there was a play where Caitlin Clark pushed off the UConn player. You know, you could see the extended arm. It was clear offensive foul, and she was, uh, she was allowed to do that, and created an open shot for herself even though she was having a tough game 
they were playing uh, good defense on her, you know, Adam's apple and all. But then it came to the end of the game, and the Iowa Hawkeyes were up by one point, and UConn had the ball with four seconds left to go. Or maybe it was like six seconds, I don't know. You know, very little time. So this player here is screening, which means you're, you have to be in a stationary position, not have any elbows out, and not lean into the defender. You have to be stationary. Um, and again, this is with six seconds left here, and they're down a point. Okay, I just want to jump in here again. Some of this stuff might be copyrighted, but it just sucks. Like ESPN sucks about copywriting things, and there seemed to be a song playing in that commercial, which might be, you know, so I might have to edit some things out. It might be choppy, you know, whatever. Later on, just so you know, if it looks, you know, if I don't, I'm not able to show you everything the way it is. The other thing is, in basketball, offensive players will screen, which means to block the, it's it's not blocking like in football, but you're trying to get in the way of a, a defender to free up your shooter or your, you know, your teammate for, you know, some open, uh, an open shot or whatever it is. And you have to be stationary. You can't throw any elbows out. You can't lean into it. But it's, you know, an easy play to call a foul on, which we'll get into in a bit. And it's a horrible call to end a game on. Like, you know, I'll talk about that extensively as well. Like, you, d you just never see it determining a game, like an illegal screen, unless it's just so flagrant that nobody would question it, right? It has to be really severe, and this thing isn't here. It's like questionable call and a call that should never be called to determine the outcome of a game. Run some kind of action. Here so there's a screen there. This girl flops a little bit. Here comes Beckers off the screen. It's a tough screen from Edwards, yes, but they call a foul there. So this is the coach of the UConn Huskies, who's, I guess, the biggest winning coach. Um, I, you know, I'm not a UConn fan, and, you know, I know there'll be Iowa Hawkeye fans maybe that show up here on this video, but I, you know, I, I grew up in Connecticut, and I kind of dislike UConn for a variety of like, reasons, and i just not a fan of Connecticut overall. People who watch my videos know this, and I don't care about college basketball. But I do care about rigging from a entertainment standpoint. And, you know, this, um, I mean, for my own entertainment, my own purposes here. And if it happens, I'm going to call it out. And, you know, you guys know I've covered this. It's not like a passion of mine, but it's interesting. And he's upset. And the, the announcer, this is, um, this is from Sports Center, but they put this on a YouTube channel called ESPN Bet. Because ESPN is now involved in gambling as is all these major, uh, I mean, gambling and sports are now hand in hand. Gambling is more, um, is more prolific, is more, uh, you know, is more financially beneficial than the games themselves, right? The money spent on gambling is four times the revenue that sports generates, and sports generates a lot of revenue. And ESPN has their own betting app, and this is on their YouTube channel, but this guy's on SportsCenter. And he's and he calls out the foul. And Gino's furious. I don't blame him. Another so here, here's the screen here. So this girl's coming around. This girl here is guarding her, who's the star for UConn. And this girl here with the, you know, the hair here, is screening. The look here. And so here, that's just a good screen. You know, it's legal screens, and I'll get into this in a moment, but. Legal screens are just not called in this situation because it shouldn't determine the outcome of a game. Another look. So you can see. Here. Left elbow? I guess. I mean, if you're going to call that, you could call every single screen in a game. Yeah, so that's what you said, right? If you call that, you could call every single screen in a game. And then it gets just gets goofy women's basketball. They foul Caitlin, uh, uh, whatever her name is. Um, and she misses a free throw, but UConn doesn't rebound because they can't jump because they're women, <laughs> you know, because they can't jump as high and, you know, that kind of thing. See, on, uh, you know, when they're shooting foul shots, the defenders, the, the team that's not shooting, is given inside position. But she shoots a, you know, a kind of a, a long shot here at the foul shot, and it bounces off the back of the rim 
and goes over the hands of these women. These tall women, right? These six four, six five, maybe. You know, they're tall women, but they just, you know, women just don't jump as high as men. Like in a, you know, game of this kind of magnitude, you got to get that rebound, and that's the whole point behind my covering this, right? Like the, there's a disparity in the athletic ability between the men and the women's game. Uh, but then here's the coach of UConn. There's probably an illegal screen call um, yeah, you could make on every single possession. I just know there were three or four of them called on us, and I don't think there were any called on them. So I guess we just got to get better at not setting illegal screens. So he clearly um, feel like it was rigged. The girls did their best job to not disparage the game on UConn, but you could see they're all bummed because you don't end a game that way, right? So I'll get into illegal spring screens in a moment, but the hilarious part about this, with 6.3 seconds left, there is a minimal chance that the UConn team's going to hit a shot because it's easy to defend for five seconds, for six seconds, right? Um, it's just going to be a tough shot. And so Iowa was more than likely going to win this game, probably there was a like 98% chance that UConn didn't even get off a quality shot, especially for women's basketball because they don't have the ability to leap over and, you know, I mean, less some kind of defensive breakdown or something, whatever it is. But it's hard, to, you know, it's hard to score in five seconds, in six seconds or whatever. And, you know, the shooting percentage as you enter the end of the game goes down dramatically because you're tired and your legs don't, you know, get the same kind of bounce. And, and you know, the you see this, there's a lot of sloppy play. And, and the little bit I watched of these, this game and the other game, there's just a lot of sloppy play. So for UConn to even get a quality shot, that would be unusual. And for them to make that shot would be extraordinary, right? But they so desperately wanted Iowa in. And there was a number of questionable calls that I saw. And, you know, they're... I'm not going to go back and find them, but there was a few things I saw. And I remember, you know, because I was like just fast forwarding through the game. And when I was fast forwarding through the game, I saw a few calls that were questionable. And then also um, the announcer was saying how UConn was in foul trouble. And so, like I saw three calls, you know, again, this is me watching five minutes of the game, three calls, and then the last call being the big one. And the thing is that an illegal screen, and you know this is what was talked about by the ESPN announcer and the coach, can be called on pretty much every play. You know, or they could call somebody running into the screen. It's just one of those bang bang calls, and they don't usually make them. Or they never make them at the end of the game. If this was men's basketball, it would be a big deal because you don't determine a game on an illegal screen, especially something that was questionably even illegal. Like, you know, the girl acted, the girl who was on defense acted like she got hit worse than she did. And, you know, you can't end a game like that. Like, it's just, you know, a big-time game. If you want to, you know, look at this as being... I mean, they're saying that women's college basketball is better than men's. And, you know, the fans are very loud. The I Iowa fans, I think, particular. It's hard to even watch. You can't even hear the announcers. It's very high-pitched, you know. like, <laughs> um, And so you just wouldn't do that, right? So the only reason is, I mean, there might be a couple reasons. One, you know, that they're promoting this person, this Caitlin, uh, geez, I can't remember her name ever, Caitlin, whatever. Um, they're promoting her. And, you know, she's born in Adam's apple, and that's, you know, good for her. <laughs> Whatever's happening there. And she's the number one college basketball player, and is this, they're, she's got n numerous endorsements from Nike and... Um, from State Farm already. She has two State Farm commercials. And so, you know, that happened. And it looks rigged as F because of the nature of that call. It was like they were going to make a call no matter what. And if there was a shot went in, they would have had a, a foul on the other end or something. It just would have happened. Because they wanted, to, they wanted her in the championship game. And they're promoting her. Like this is something that happens in sports and, you know, and now they've contaminated, I mean, this movement of women's basketball by doing this because it's controversial and people are talking about 
So it says here that UConn committed 18 fouls. 11 came in the second half, whereas Iowa committed uh, three in the first half and six in the second. So UConn committed a total of 18 fouls, Iowa uh, nine, so twice as many. And that the 11 big second half fouls, and I think UConn was leading most of the game. Like Iowa came back in the second half. And, you know, I saw this, one of the biggest, um, uh, there was two games with the Los Angeles Lakers with Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. One was against Sacramento Kings and the other was against the Portland Trailblazers where there was a huge amount of, there was a big foul disparity, disparity of the fourth quarter of a game seven in the playoffs where the other team was winning by like 20 points and then they just, you know, the the refs just came out and rigged the game. Like, I was watching those games and you could just see it. Because they wanted the Los Angeles Lakers in the finals. And this happened here. Like, it's clearly this is the case. Um, and uh, let's move to the, the other commercial here. Shoot. Shoot. Okay, I'll shoot. What's happening? But I don't see any hoop. No, I said that because of, uh, I'm sorry, shoot. I'll shoot. Where's the hoop? The- Jimmy Butler. I don't have one. You stop saying the answer. I didn't know. They're going to want the jingle for this. Okay. Like, like a, a good neighbor, neighbor State, State Farm, Farm is there. there. Don't worry. State Farm makes it easy to file a claim on the app for a new car or... These are horrible ads State Farm puts out. Now, college basketball players, college athletes are now able to get endorsements, which is a good thing because, you know, their money is being made off of them. Um, but Caitlin Clark has a huge following and probably of any amateur athlete is the most successful financially. Or even that old pacer. Someone call for an old pacer? Like a good neighbor. Okay, so that was that one. Oh, I need a break. Time for a Big Ten game break. I'm Jenny Taft here with Hawkeye Caitlin Clark. Um, excuse me, I just need a little help. Life's moving really fast. New job, new car, new apartment. Oh, you don't need us. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm is there. Boom, the jingle. For you and can help with your insurance needs. That's Jake from State Farm. Oh. Hey, Jenny, I gotta get back to the game. Oh, right. Let me just grab a latte to go. Make that too. Could have a scone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Kaboom. She already has a net worth of $3.2 million. So to go along with that, um, Ticket prices to see Caitlin Clark possibly break NCAA record are most expensive ever. So the Iowa, her last game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Again, Iowa is a great state for farming. Never been there, but I know that they have uh, incredible topsoil. You know, these Midwestern states. Um, But there's not a lot going on in Iowa. Like, you know, you never hear very much about Iowa. And so they're really into Caitlin Clark. And there was the ticket um there was a ticket that sold for six thousand dollars at this last game the um game between yukon and um iowa was the most watched at 14.2 million people the before that the record was the game between iowa and lsu last year and it has to do with iowa right and before that iowa versus lsu this year broke ratings records so the two games the two last games of Caitlin Clark's career were you know record breaking so this is the reason for the foul disparity and you know all of it so I just want to clarify this there is obviously a financial incentive and entertainment incentive and the growing of college sports uh, college women's college basketball which is doing better in the ratings in some cases than in the men's college basketball and so they're really pushing this, and they want to make the WNBA legitimate and, you know, some of these things, right? Now, there was some speculation that Brittany Griner was an actual dude. Again, you know, I'm not going to show you pictures of Brittany right here. I'm not going to get into all that. And I'm not saying Caitlin Clark is a dude, but, you know, there was an Adam's apple, right? So there's that. You know, my wife pointed out there was another famous act- athlete named Caitlin you know, who has an Adam's apple, right? Um, You know, I used to cover this, and then it got goofy, and I talk about this extensively in my other video on my other channel that I talked about already, that, 
you know, there was these people that came out and said every woman who's famous is a man, and, you know, without real legitimate proof. Like, it could be the case. Like, I can show you pictures. I showed pictures of Martha Washington. Somebody said to look for a, a picture of Susan B. Anthony. Um, here's Susan B. Anthony. Looking very dudish, right? Um, that looks kind of like a dude, right? Um, again, you know, the um, historically in the Freemasons, like that looks like a dude right there. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, maybe he is, maybe he isn't, but could be, right? There's an actor who looks like that. Can't remember his name, some old actor. One more picture of, of Susan B. Anthony, you know, judge for yourself. You know, but there is this movement that happened that I was part of this, you know, I, part, I partly started. And then it got goofy in the truth community where everybody was a, a man, it's a dude, it's a man, you know, this thing. And I cover it extensively. You can watch it on my other channel. And so, like, I'm not into that, like, anymore because of the, you know, I don't make videos about it because it just got so goofy. But the bigger part here is the powers that be are lying all the time. And there is some evidence of this, that they're either promoting more masculine women. I mean, you do see this in, in Marvel films and action films where women are beating up men now and the feminist moving, movement pushing these things and then all the other movements that are happening. And they're changing the narrative and the you know, dynamics and the reality, all these things. And so, you know, it's suspect. And you, this person shows up and they immediately crown her into some sort of a star. She's sporting an Adam's apple, and that's just, you know, I mean, she might be, a, I mean, any woman who plays sports is going to be a little bit more masculine, right? It doesn't mean they're necessarily, you know, born a male, but, you know, there's some questions. There's questions about Serena Williams and some of these other athletes that seem, you know, a little bit too manly in these things, right? Um, you know, in all of it. When we see that there are biological men competing against biological women, you know, taking some um, you know, some some hormones or whatever, but still, you know, it's a big thing. But the bigger issue is when you're dealing with liars, people who run the system who lie all the time, media lies and all this, and, you know, deceivers who perpetrate these deceptive mind control, you know, whatever it is, psychological operations, you always have to wonder. And like, you know, I, I mean, it's not a slam dunk, but, you know, at least it's a legitimate question, right, in terms of all of this. You know, certainly they're it looks like they rigged this game and they're promoting this person. And so, you know, what's the reasoning behind that? Um, we'll never, we'll never, you know, I'm not going down the rabbit hole, but it's something you can't prove. But, you know, it always looks pretty fishy, right? This came in right after I did the other parts of this video. Somebody sent me this. Nikit Ackman says Kevin Bar Kevin Garnett is the secret father of her two-year-old daughter and wants him to pay child support. So that happened. Um, Real Housewives star Laura Peterson's son, Josh Warning, Warning dead at 35. Um, this also just in. Physicists found the ghost haunting the world's most famous particles accelerator, CERN. An invisible force has long eluded detection with CERN's Halls until now. Um, in new research, physicists, scientists in Switzerland, you know this, have isolated a resonant ghost that affects how particles behave inside the superproton synchrotron. It's a 3D shape that shifts over time, meaning it's best measured in 4D without time. And the secret is the same reason you spill your coffee walking to your desk, or or you super bounce your friends off the trampoline. The SPS ring that, I guess this is going to be some scientific crap, um, but they use the term ghost, and they don't know what the F they're doing over there. <laughs> um, but, you know, coal brings plenty. Coal brings plenty. 1923 actor found dead at 27 after being reported missing. Um, I've seen this show. I, I recognize the guy here. Um, so this is Cole Brings Plenty is his name, which is, you know, quite a good name. Paul Brings Plenty. I don't think it would... <laughs> I don't think that would play the same way. Um, there's no, there's no uh, details of the cause of death. 
Um, so there is a 27 club of famous um, Kurt Cobain, Brian Jones, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, Robert Johnson, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and more. But there's more than just musicians. There was that actor, you know, I covered him. He, um, forget what his name was, but he was in, um, he played a young, uh, this guy, um, Yelchin, something Yelchin, um, what's his name here? Anton Yelchin. And he died, uh, weird, uh, he, um, he was in Terminator Salvation, and he played, you know, one of the characters. Um, I think he played the John Connor character or the other guy. He played the Kyle Reese character. He's the guy that um, ends up being John Connor's father, but John Connor is his mentor in a, you know, and he sends Kyle Reese back to meet his mom and save him, save his mom. It's the original Terminator. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I did a whole video on this, right? The whole 27 Club thing. When this guy had this bizarre death. So what happens was this guy had a Jeep. And he was driving home. It was like 2 in the morning. He decides to get his, get his mail. Probably was partying. At least that would be part of the story. And he lived on a hill in you know California somewhere. This house. And he's getting the mail. And he had one of those mailboxes that was like a a pillar or something, you know, brick mailbox, you know, brick, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the post that the mailbox was on was pretty heavy duty. And his car somehow got, fell out of drive, you know, spontaneously and rolled back into him and crushed him. He's 27 year old kid, doesn't get out of the way or anything. And that's how he died, right? Cause of death, weird cause of death. And, you know, he was 27 years old, and you know, I covered this, and then the 27 Club thing came up with all these famous, you know, musicians, and then now this um, this newest actor from the, uh, you know, one of these Yellowstone series spinoffs. And there's a number of these people in the 27 Club. It's just bizarre. And this is this. Anna Paquin uses cane on red carpet after difficult years with... Years with Two, difficult, two years with health issues that affected her m mobility, it hasn't been easy. And so, you know, they're just falling apart here. I mean, every possible way. You know, we live in strange times. So everyone can see that. And, you know, people think that this is progress. The liberals think that there's progress going on, and it's not, right? Scientists and technological people think we're getting more technologically uh, advanced, and that makes us that's evolution and it's not and all the things that we're seeing socially and everything else is a degradation we're moving far and farther away from the divinity within us and our soul driven purpose and disconnected from everything with that our families and the rest of these things and they have an agenda and they're pushing this agenda and they believe that it's evolution when it's you know something of a demonic nature and you know so everything's questionable because their motives and their they're either they either know it's demonic and they're doing it purposefully or they're deluded themselves and they have this power now and people are degrading themselves anyway through the addiction to the internet and all these other things that are deviant in one way or another and so everything is questionable um you know <laughs> only spirituality will save this world it's barbado definitely reporting from the apocalypse and the ascension everyone have a blessed day and be grateful